Hey, what's going on guys? So I'm actually really excited to be doing some uh, bodyweight workouts with you. And this first one's gonna take a little bit longer because I'm gonna do some explaining on how it's gonna work. But essentially everything that you need to know is going to be in the description of this live video, which I believe is at the top of this video. Um, and it's gonna give you everything you need to know. So you basically got your, your workout set up and there's gonna be different levels. So beginner, intermediate, and advanced are all gonna have different you know, setups. So beginner, it's gonna be a little bit, obviously a little less aggressive. You're gonna have just as much rest as you have work. You're gonna only be doing four rounds. It should take you between 15 to 20 minutes. Intermediate is gonna be very similar, except it's gonna be a little bit more aggressive in terms of how long you do the exercise followed by a little less rest to really get the heart rate going. And I believe that I put five rounds for the intermediate. And if you're doing advanced, which is what I'm gonna be doing in this video today, for those that wanna follow along, it's gonna be 45 seconds per exercise. It's gonna be only 20 seconds of rest for five rounds. And this is gonna take about 15 to, well, no, I think when I mapped it out, it's gonna take about 30 minutes. So it's gonna be about a 30 minute workout provided I don't get interrupted by my dogs to have to use the bathroom or Val doesn't call me and my phone goes off and I have to answer my phone, which is very likely to happen. So anyway, I've got everything set up. If you have any questions, um, you, you can obviously let me know in the comments. I might not be able to see you live. Hey, what's going on, Nick? Nick, are you, is your job closed now too? Or are you just watching during your lunch break? Because, you know, uh, hey, who knows? Maybe you could work out during your lunch break. But anyway, um, so this is how it's gonna be set up and I plan on doing these in the future, especially if we all get stuck in our houses and there's nothing to do but uh, to be in our houses with other people and we wanna get a workout somehow, this is the way I'm gonna at least do it for myself and I figured why not broadcast it. So um, anyway, that's what I have set up right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and get things started. I'm gonna make sure I got everything going on my end of things. Got a prep time, 10 seconds. Okay, so just to make sure that we understand, we've got um, the exercises in this order. Horse plank, which I'm actually gonna demonstrate before I get into it, just so you guys know um, uh, what a horse plank is. I had a couple of people ask me, like I've never even heard of that, and that might be just something that I call it, I don't remember. Um, mountain climbers, jumping jacks, uh, speed skaters, and high knees. So I'm gonna be going through each one of these exercises with you. Now, if you end up doing this workout on your own, I provided links to the timers that I use. I'm gonna be using one on my computer because I can't use the one on my phone, but the phone one is really awesome. If you have an iOS phone, so an iPhone, I would highly recommend the one there. Um, I also linked to one that's for the Android phone. I've actually never used that because I don't have an Android phone, but the reviews looked really good and people said it was, is a, it was a pretty good app. So I don't know necessarily how to use it, but I can trust that if someone's leaving a review for it, it's probably at least somewhat intuitive, okay? So um, those are the order of the exercise. Let's first go over what a horse plank is because it might not be completely obvious. Now a horse plank is a, is a plank. Hey, what's going on, Uncle Joe? How you doing? I didn't see you come in. I'm good, how are you guys? Are you guys safe? You guys doing okay? Not, hopefully not being too greatly affected by what's going on, just staying safe to, to some degree and staying healthy. So a horse plank, I'm gonna to turn to the side so you can see it, is kind of a beginner's plank exercise. So it looks a lot like this position, but what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your knees off the ground and you're just gonna hold this. So you're on your toes, you're on your hands, and your knees are off the ground and you're just holding this position. It's a really good first kind of plank exercise for those that need it. Uh, if you've never done a plank before or you have a hard time doing your planks, then that's a good way to start. And I'm gonna be doing 45 seconds of it, which is you know pretty aggressive, but I am doing the advanced workout. So if you um, are doing a lesser version, you can still follow along. You'll just finish before I do, uh, and you'll probably be at a different pace, okay? Cool. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and get started so you guys can see me sweat, which is gonna be fun for everyone. All right, so, okay. So we got this on, this is good to go. I'm gonna go ahead and start my timer. Let's tuck in my shirt first. That way it doesn't fly everywhere. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So first exercise is going to be a force plank. So I'm gonna go ahead and get in that position here. And this little guy is gonna go off every time I need to switch exercises. Three, two, one. All 
right, so this is probably the most boring way to start off my workout, which is just me holding up my position with my knees off the ground. But this ab exercise is actually really good because what it does is it puts emphasis on upper body stability. It also puts enough strain on your core to be able to, to build some core strength, but it also doesn't put you in a vulnerable position. So like if I was a beginner, I could easily just go to my knees if I had to, but if, you know, if I didn't need to, then I was still in a safe place. So this is still a really good exercise, uh, even if it's something that maybe you, you maybe you're already passed. Like maybe you're already past something like a horse plank, and you don't really need to be. Uh, this isn't really challenging for you. It's still a good exercise to at least do. All right. So now I've got basically 20 seconds to get in the next position. Hey, what's up, Annette? What's up, Val? <clears throat> So I got 20 seconds to get the next position. Next exercise is going to be mountain climber. So 45 seconds, I'm going to be doing mountain climber. <clears throat> this is a long time to be doing mountain climbers. Typically speaking, for mountain climbers, because of how metabolic they are, you usually only do them for about 20, 25 seconds, sometimes 30, but 45 is really to get the heart rate going. Makes it extra challenging as a core position and you don't need any equipment. So finding ways to challenge yourself without equipment is important. All right, so I just did my 45 seconds of mountain climbers. Now I'm gonna be on to jumping jacks. I don't know why it, there we go. So jumping jacks, basically just your standard jumping jack. Nothing too fancy here. Now in future workouts, what I plan on doing is I plan on mixing up the kind of jumping jacks. Because if you're doing this every workout, especially if you're doing body weight only workouts, this could be super boring, but it's basic enough to where you don't need a lot of equipment, which is important. And if you guys do have equipment at home, well, let me know what kind of stuff you have. I'm going to be building, you know, some dumbbell workouts, some kettlebell workouts. I'm also going to try to find ways to uh, create Workouts with weights you might have around the house, like water bottles or water jugs, or you know, some kind of way you can create weight without having to go out and buy like a traditional weight. So now I got speed skaters. This is gonna be a lateral movement side to side. I think I'm going to regret not putting shoes on, but, oh well. <clears throat> it's either that or get my carpet dirty and then have to clean my carpet, so. All right. So we're down to our last exercise for the round. After this exercise, there's gonna be a one minute break. So for one minute, what's up David? I will be, all right, so now I'm doing high knees. I'll turn to the side so you can see it. It's kind of like running in place, except obviously you wanna to try to get your knees pretty high. really have no idea how long 45 seconds is until you start exercising. 
Jeez. I can't even text message this for 45 seconds and it'd be long enough. All right, so I believe I'm down to my last exercise. So now I got a one minute break. I don't know if that includes the rest time as well, but it looks like it does. So it's gonna be like a minute and 20 seconds. All right, so that's the end of my first Tabata. So what's really cool about Tabatas or interval training is that once you do one round, you basically know all the exercises. Now you're just repeating. So it's kind of nice because you do the first round, you get all the exercises, you can understand how to use them, how to do them. And then after that, it's just about repeating it. So it's a really simple, you only need like five exercises and you just repeat for rounds. All right, so I'm back to that horse plank again. Not exactly sure how much time I have left. Let's go ahead and see, almost there. I'm warmed up now. I was cold before because I was sitting down working, but feeling good now. This is a really long break. Maybe I shouldn't have made it this long. <laughs> oh well, I probably could have gotten some water. All right, back to horse plank. This is round two. And I'm, I'm starting to realize that a horse plank is pretty, it's pretty challenging. I mean, it's definitely not like a regular plank, but I'm actually having a harder time trying to hold this position than I would a plank, and I'm not really exactly sure why. I think it's because I'm on my toes and having to just be off the ground a little bit is harder. Like if I had my legs extended like this, I feel like it's, I don't know, the anchor point is further away. This feels a lot harder, at least on my quads. Maybe it's just me. You don't usually hold planks for 45 seconds either. That could be part of it. And then I got my least favorite exercise, mountain climbers coming up number two. We're in round number two, so this is the second of five rounds we're going to be doing. I don't know why I agreed to do this. Just kidding. I agreed to do it because it's fun. All right, so 45 seconds of mountain climbers. Now, mountain climbers are usually trying to be done for speed, but when you got 45 seconds on the clock and you're trying to go as fast as possible, there's a good chance you're not going to last that long. So what I like to do is I like to encourage that if you're doing a long clock, which for intervals is anything above 25 seconds on average, then you probably want to go more for endurance. So you want to go for muscular endurance as opposed to simply just, uh, you know, intervals or high heart rate. Oh man, thank God that's over. 45 seconds of mountain climbers is like, it's like torture almost. Almost, it's not quite torture. Torture would be like getting whipped and exercising at the same time. All right, so got jumping jacks next. Now, you might be thinking, you know, why did I put mountain climbers back to back with horse plank? It's like the same position and I must be tired from doing it. And the answer is yes. But if you're into the advanced group, you're always looking for something that's gonna push you to the edge anyway. So doing 45 seconds a horse plank followed by 45 seconds of mountain climbers gets you to that point. Your shoulders are going to be burning, your core is going to be tired. It allows you with just your body weight to go that extra mile, or at least be tested that extra mile. All right, I got speed skaters next. I don't know if, which one I like more, high knees or speed skaters. Now I really like this exercise because it's somewhere in the middle between like a higher impact kind of exercise and a moderately impact exercise because you can definitely do this like this 
you know, if you're a beginner, just moving like this is totally cool. If you're more advanced, you're kind of jumping off of one leg onto the other side. If you're somewhere in the middle, you're probably doing something like this. Either way, do what you can. The whole idea with these workouts is to get your body moving, okay? We're not worried about how many calories we burn or how high our heart rate gets. We're trying to maximize what we can do being quarantined, all right? Which is anything is better than nothing, right? If you can't go outside and go for a walk, the very least you could do is do something in your house. So while there's nothing wrong with that kind of stuff, we want to focus on just actually doing the movements first. What am I doing? High knees? So the priority is always doing the exercise, right? Getting the workout done. That should always be the first priority. Once you've gotten the habit of doing that, then trying to challenge yourself with doing more work or resting less or trying to get your heart rate to a certain point or burn a certain amount of calories, that's where that stuff comes in. But none of that stuff's important if you don't have consistency down first. So if you're new to this, or maybe you work out, but you haven't really done this style of working out before, it can be really important to know what you should be prioritizing, which in this case should be getting your workout done. If you're more advanced to that and you're already in the habit of getting your workout done, then prioritizing things like trying to get more calories burned or trying to get your heart rate up or challenge yourself in other ways, that's your second step. Okay? So order of importance is super important. All right, so my second round just ended. Whew, starting to actually get warm now. Plus, I think talking while you work out is like bonus points, right? It's like brownie points or something. I feel like I should get an extra award for having to talk and work out. But if Tony Horton can do it, and I can do it at the gym, I don't usually do it this long, but I still do it at the gym. All right, so it looks like, yeah, we just completed our second round. So we're on the horse plank again, which is basically a plank. It looks like you're on your hands and knees, but you just bring your knees off the ground and that puts you in what's called the horse plank position. Really good for beginners because if you can't hold the position anymore, you just drop your knees. So it's a safe position for the spine. It's safe for the shoulders. It's not gonna put any excess pressure on your low back if you can't do it anymore. So it's a great progression or I guess a regression from a, an actual plank. All right, back to horse planks. Round number three. So we're doing a total of five rounds. So we got this round and two more after it. When you're doing holding positions, especially for a long amount of time, sometimes I tell people to not think about what they're doing and to think about something else they're doing later in the day but I'm not sure that's the greatest advice right now because if you're doing this workout and you're quarantined, you're not really doing anything. There's really nothing serious to look forward to other than maybe dinner or your next meal. So what I recommend you do instead is think about how far you've come, if you've improved, right? Think about the last time you did or the first time you did the exercise. How much harder was it? You know, like for instance, I just did 45 seconds of a horse plank. Let's say in the past I was only able to do 30 seconds. Well, okay, I've improved, right? Improvement, you want to pay attention to those things. All right, this might be the worst exercise to do for 45 seconds. And of course, I put it in my workout because that's just the kind of person I am. Talk about being distracted. There's the string, the drawstring from my, uh, from my sweatshirt and swinging back and forth, which is seriously playing with my OCD. But it's distracting from the amount of discomfort I'm in doing the world's longest mountain climber. As I look back on the ground, I'm seeing all the dog hair I'm kicking up. So it's probably a good time to, uh, to vacuum the living room, even though I just vacuumed on uh, Saturday, I think it was. Yep, that's what happens when you have two dogs. 
two big dogs. What am I even doing now? Jumping jacks, here we go. Round three. You know, for someone who doesn't do a lot of body weight workouts at my house, I'm not doing too bad. That being said, I'm probably gonna eat my words by round four. Because if there's one thing that I've noticed about working out, is that you hit a wall pretty quick. And if I haven't hit that wall yet, it doesn't mean I won't. It just means, means I need a little bit more time. Woo! All right. Speed skaters. This is awesome. Thanks for doing it. You are very welcome. It's very debilitating to not be able to go to your gym. I know for the gym for me a lot of times it's like a second home. It's like my safe space, so to speak. What am I supposed to be doing? Speed skaters? So, you know, with everyone having to find other ways to exercise, I mean, I don't recommend just stopping exercise. This is a great way to feel empowered to keep your results. Because we're really not trying to make huge gains while we do at-home workouts. I mean, maybe for some of you that would be you know, a big change, but we're just trying to maintain a normal kind of level of fitness. If we're used to going to the gym and lifting weights, we want to be able to maintain whatever ability we had when we left the gym until gyms open up again. And that's what these are going to be able to do for you. And if you're at a fitness level that's below this, this is going to actually improve you while you keep inside or where you, you have to be inside for most of the day anyway. So it is my pleasure and you know at the end of the day I get to exercise, which is a great excuse. Or this is a great excuse to have to get a workout in. Because I'm just like everyone else. I need to be held accountable. Right? I don't just wake up and go, I can't wait to work out. I used to do that. Then I got something called a job. And even though I work at a gym, you'd think. Well, it's easy. You just work out after you're, you know, after you're done working with clients. Yeah, but I'm still tired. I mean, it's not like talking to people for four straight hours is not some kind of a workout. So, you know, I get tired like everyone else. I get food cravings like everyone else. It's just a matter of trying to maintain some level of fitness while we, while we all have to stay away from each other. And that's the beauty of the internet is that, you know, I might not be in person with you right now, but you're getting at least, you know, a large portion of the benefit as you would get if I was in person. So, all right, just like that. See, talking through round three actually made it seem less painful. If I was doing this by myself, I would already be done with this workout. I'd be like, I don't wanna do this anymore. So you are actually helping me stay accountable to helping you stay accountable. It's a perfect circle. <laughs> All right, so we're on to round four, and then we got round five. Now, nothing changes throughout this workout. Once you do round one, it's basically just a re repetition of rounds, uh, you know, round one. You're just doing it over and over. So at this point, if you don't wanna watch the video anymore, you don't have to. But at least you know what's going on, and you have an idea of how this is set up. And I'm pretty sure by like the fourth or fifth video that I do, You'll have such a good idea of what you're supposed to be doing, you probably won't even need these videos. But it's kind of fun to do anyway, so maybe I'll keep them up. I don't know. We'll see how this first one goes. All right, we're getting ready for round four. Looks like we're almost there. All right, horse plank. This would be a good challenge for like, you know, like a fitness challenge. Who can hold the longest horse plank? You know what, and when you hold this plank position, one of the things, you're gonna feel this in a regular plank too, but I would say that in a straight arm plank, what you feel more is kind of the fatigue in your, in your shoulder blades. Because at the end of the day, keeping those contracted is, is probably a better strategy than just trying to keep your core tight. Obviously, keeping your core tight keeps your back straight and keeps you upright and actually works your abs. But having to contract your shoulder blades 
It was a whole different thing. And it really makes a difference. I'm actually starting to sweat now. I'm starting to actually feel the sweat at this point. Almost time for mountain climbers. You notice I'm not talking as much. It's a little bit harder to talk right now. Oh man, thank God we only have to do that one more time. You're welcome. No problem, Nick. This will give you something to do while you are quarantined. I don't know how many people are quarantined so far. I only think that a couple of jobs where I live have been affected by jumping jacks. I know schools, I think schools tomorrow are off for a month. I don't know about individual jobs. I guess if you work in the public sector, you're probably already on quarantine. If you're in the private sector, my guess is, is that you'll probably have, especially if you're in service, like I'm obviously in service, in the service industry. I'm not exactly sure when we're closing down, but a lot of the gyms in our area are closing, so I guess we'll find out. Whew. All right. You know, jumping jacks don't seem that bad until you get to round five. Or wait, are we on round four? We're on round four. It don't really seem that bad until you get to round four and then you're like, why did I put these in here? So when you look at a workout, and you see something like skaters or, you know, jumping jacks, you might not think much of it, but it's really the amount and how, for how long that you're doing them that really makes a difference. And if we're trying to kind of mimic our workouts at the gym, we're gonna have to do a couple of things. Because weight really isn't involved, we're going to have to decrease the rest and we're gonna have to increase the duration in which we do exercises. And then we're also gonna to have to increase the rounds in order to do enough rounds to equal something close to what our workout time is gonna be. So like this is gonna finish, this is 23 minutes, excuse me, 23 minutes in so far. Got another seven or so minutes to go. 30 minute workout, we've probably burned about the same amount of calories if not more doing this workout than we might do for 45 minutes or an hour. What am I supposed to be doing? High knees. So anyway, that's just kind of background information. Not something you have to actually know. So this is the last one for round one, or for round three, or no, are we? I don't even know where we're at. I'm not being a very good instructor right now. I'll check in a second, I can't see it. I feel like I'm in one of those movies where they're running, but the background doesn't change, or the background changes because you got like a green screen, except I don't have a green screen. All right, so that's my fourth round. I only got one round left. We only have round, one round left. I really do appreciate if you're following along. Thanks a ton. And thanks for doing the advanced workout with me. I don't know if I'll always do the advanced workout. <laughs> I probably should. If you're an instructor, you should probably do the advanced workout. But we'll see. 
I think I've said hi to everyone, everyone who's come in. What's going on, guys? Sorry if my finger's not really... Apparently I wasn't tapping the right button. All right, five minutes to go, which means we only have one round left. Super excited. Five exercises left. The first two I'm looking forward to the least. Horse planks and mountain climbers. Not my first choice. Whew. All right, how much more time do we got? Let's get in position. Remember these minute rests are really for you to be able to get some water and use the bathroom if you had to. Wanted to give you plenty of time. They're also for recovery. If you feel like you're sucking air right now, then that minute rest is gonna help bring your heart rate back down and allow you to do multiple rounds. Because remember, we're not trying to blast ourselves in 15 minutes. There's definitely a time and place for that. But for today's workout, we're trying to get a good 20 to 30 minute workout that somewhat mimics the amount of calories and the amount of time we spend burning to keep our fitness up while we are kind of stuck at home, so to speak. Now I realize that if the horse plank is challenging, you could go into something a little bit wider. It's usually the narrow position of the horse plank that's challenging, not so much the exercise itself. So modifications in case you need them. All right, we have mountain climbers. That's what's next. Oh, maybe that's why I put this exercise number two because then I can just get it over with. It probably helps that I'm not going anywhere. Like I feel like maybe if I was going somewhere, these mountain climbers wouldn't suck so much. But it's like, I'm just looking at the ground. Oh, I'm so glad it's over. And you will be too when you do them. Oh. What's up, Derek? What do I got next? Jumping jacks? Oh, man, anything other than mountain climbers. Anything other than mountain climbers. This actually feels pretty good because I'm getting like wind from my arms, which feels good on the sweat on my forehead. Almost there, we got a minute and a half left of exercise. Cool. Speed skaters are next. Not much, man, just, just sweating. Definitely sweating, you probably can't see it. But it's there. It's invisible pain. Now remember, if you're doing a not advanced version, if you're doing beginner or intermediate, you can definitely just do something like this, right? The idea with all these exercises is that they have modifications or they're really easy to make harder or easier based on your ability. Another thing that home workouts will teach you is just how fit you actually are. And this can bring up some, you know, some ego. And what I like to say is if you're exercising to keep yourself safe, keep your ego out of it. There's nothing wrong with pushing yourself, but if you physically can't do something, just modify. Okay, don't let it get the best of you. The path to getting better is actually making it easier first, getting used to doing it, and allow, allowing consistency to make things better for you. Okay, so you know, don't beat yourself up if you can't do some of this stuff. 
If you have questions about modifications that go beyond the ones that I've given, just hit me up, ask a question. I'm always up for questions, always willing to help. I've been doing this so long that my computer screen isn't on anymore. It went to save mode, so I have no idea how long I'm supposed to be doing this. Thank goodness this is the last exercise. It's definitely been fun doing this. I only did this workout once before I'm doing it with you now. And you think I would have changed the order of horse planks and mountain climbers, but there's something sinister in me that kept it that way. That's kind of cool. I didn't know that was gonna happen, but anyway, so that is our 30 minute workout. We'll see, we did it 30, 30 minutes and 45 seconds. Again, it's probably not gonna be the same workout that you've done at the gym, but these are different times. And if we're gonna get used to being stuck in a house, we might as well find ways to stay fit. Even if it just means doing this a couple times a week, it's definitely not something you have to do every day. Um, in fact, one of the things that I, th I think would be a really good idea is once we start piling up these workouts, because I've already gotten, I think I already got like four or five total workouts written. This is the first one I've recorded. Um, yeah, gyms are closed, exactly. That's why I'm doing this. So I've already got four or five workouts that you can do at home with just your body weight written. After I release those, I'm gonna be doing ones that um, involve a little bit of equipment for those that do have equipment. Um, I wanna try to make sure that if you do have equipment, you can utilize it. And if uh, you have questions about how to do workouts with equipment at your house, how to organize them, how to structure them, just let me know, or I'll make you one. I'll do it that way. I'm not promising anything. I'm just saying those are possibilities. So yeah, anyway, be on the lookout for more of these. Um, this is probably the only one I'm gonna do this week because I really have no idea what's going on uh, with my week, the rest of my week anyway. Um, but yeah, we'll see. You know, the deeper into actually being forced to be quarantined that we all get, the easier it's going to be to make these workouts because this will be pretty much uh, all the exercise I'll be able to do because gyms just won't be open. But anyway, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, or during this time you're not exactly sure how to you know, stay healthy, I know that nutrition is gonna be somewhat challenging because you don't have the same access to food, but it might be kind of fun to uh, shoot me what you have available and maybe we can come up with something together that's a little bit more on the nutritious end. Um, the good thing is, is that if you go places like Walmarts, Walmart and most grocery stores, all the healthy food's still there. <laughs> Because nobody's that interested in perishables, which is understandable. I'm not judging anyone, but you can still go out and buy, you know, fruits and vegetables. Um, and if, in, at the very least, you could freeze them, right? If you got a pretty big freezer, buy fresh stuff, freeze it, or buy frozen stuff and keep it frozen, uh, because that's going to be just as good, and it's better than nothing. Again, it's about a time of understanding what's the best option, what you can manage, and then just sticking to it. So, anyway, guys, thanks for watching this video. Thanks for following along with the workout. If you did. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments down below, or you can also message me here on Facebook. All right, have a good rest of your day and stay safe.